Welcome YouTube somatic yoga fans. Today's title is somatic yoga for sensuous shoulders and awesome arms. Give yourself a hug. Really start with that. Give yourself a hug. Our arms are an extension of our heart and you'll often find if you're feeling gloomy or not a lot of energy or protecting yourself, we spend a lot of time here. So that's that's the idea of protecting the front of the heart. But we also sometimes spend too much time here with too much arch in the low back. We call that the green light reflex. The other one was the red. And that's because we're protecting the back of our heart. So by working with our arms and acknowledging our shoulders, we can create spaciousness and fluidity, comfort, physical comfort, but also energetically a flow from the heart through the hands. So. If you followed along a couple weeks ago, I did a dish towel practice for your legs and your hips. This is another dish towel practice. So grab your dish towel. And we're gonna start this time on our front side. So come on to your front side, set your dish towel there across opposite hand to elbow. So we're gonna create a little bit of a loop energetically with our arms and just let your forehead rest on your top arm bone. And while you're there, we wanna acknowledge the lower body just to let it know that it's it's not on this date with us it's it's going to relax and release so you might shift your hips side to side or roll the thighs into the ground you can even bend your knees take your feet up towards the sky and rock your legs like windshield wipers anything to give everything from the waist down permission to relax and then let the legs come down if your feet are uncomfortable, put a rolled blanket underneath the ankles. But from here, we want to find the bony landmarks of our shoulders. So start by noticing, and you could even touch them if you want, where your collarbones are. Since those, I call them the break struts in the front of your shoulder girdle. And see if you can breathe in a way it feels like you're breathing right into and underneath those break struts, those collarbones, or even just to the base of the throat. You can smell something nice in the air, and you're bringing that right into the base of the throat, and it's spreading like a smile across your collarbones. So recognizing ourselves through these bony landmarks in the front of the shoulder girdle. And now take yourself into the back body and see if you can locate yourself through the shoulder blades, the scapula on either side of the spine. And if you take some nice, comfortable, but deep breaths into your rib cage, you'll sense the ribs expanding outward and upward as you breathe in. Think of them giving the shoulder blades a little ride upward and outward. And the breath out, the shoulder blades come back in and down. As the ribs come back together, the lungs empty. So there's a harmony, a little dance that happens in our back body when we breathe to the backs of the lungs. Breathing right underneath the shoulder blades. That sense of expansion and space. And that's the back door of the heart. And letting it all go, you could even breathe out your mouth. It's really clear, release. Take two more rounds of breath, keeping awareness in the upper back, the shoulders. Consider setting a heartfelt intention for yourself. And then slowly feel your arms. You can even touch your own elbows, sense your elbow joints and your wrists, touch your wrists, opposite wrists to opposite wrists, and slide your arms out to your sides. We're gonna start with one side. So we'll begin with the left arm. And we're gonna just take the right arm down to our side to let it relax. Know that you can rest on your right cheek or left cheek. And if you like a pillow or something, you can do that or on your chin. But take the um, tea towel and put it underneath your left elbow. And start by just pushing into the tea towel with the elbow and then releasing. And notice how you feel that. Is it in that upper back area on the left side? 
Notice it in your upper arm. But we also just check, is anything firing or contracting in the lower half? So I want you to divide your body from upper to lower. Can we keep the, what I say, the butt cheeks, the, the firing of the butt cheeks relaxed and the back of the hamstrings, the low back is relaxed. Just trying to engage the muscles in that upper left shoulder by pushing downward and then releasing. If you want to do this to your breath, you might push as you breathe in and release as you breathe out. Or what I like to do sometimes is to push for a few breaths, really feel that contraction, the engagement of the muscles. We're recruiting the muscles in the upper left arm and around the shoulder blade. And then slowly release it a couple exhales, like 25% at a time. So once we've landed and found those muscles in the upper left, and think of that left shoulder blade, that's your bony landmark. You'll want to be on that slippery floor, so you might need to move to the left side of your mat a little bit, to start to make some movements. And the movements might be up and down. That's fairly easy, an easy moving movement pattern. And you're pushing just enough to engage those muscles. But if you push too much, you'll see you can't move the arms. So just the right amount to engage. I'm hearing some creaking in my left shoulder. <laughs> and in addition to the up and down, you might even make some circles. So my hands relax, my lower arm relax as much as possible. But I'm cleaning the floor with my left elbow. <laughs> but sensing the way that the upper arm bone is coming into the shoulder socket, that beautiful humerus bone, you can visualize that being supported by the brake strut collarbone in the front and the shoulder blade in the back. And check yourself to make sure there's nothing else tightening. So are you tightening your jaw or your neck or your right arm? Can they all be on holiday and everything below the waist? Just that upper left shoulder. Take a few more circles or up and down and then just relax it for a moment. Sense any lingering sensations in the left upper arm and shoulder. And then we'll switch and we're going to take that cloth underneath the left hand. So you can take your arm out to your side off the shoulder, overhead. It really doesn't matter so much. But try to get as straight as you can through your elbow and begin to push into the hand now and then release. And you might push on the breath in and release on the breath out, but take a few moments too. So we, this is a little bit of what we call in somatics, a pandiculation. You wanna, you wanna tighten the muscles and then lengthen. So I'm not only pushing, I'm reaching just a little bit, but also I'm reaching the hand, but plugging the upper arm bone into the shoulder socket. So it's not a disconnect of the arm from the shoulder. It's a deep connection of the bone into the shoulder, but also that pushing. And notice all the muscles wrapping themselves around the bones in the entire left arm. And then slowly release it completely. Let the elbow fall down. Do that a few times. Just acknowledging. You might even spread your fingers. Feel the muscles in your hands. And release. And can you sense that engagement all the way from the fingers into that left shoulder blade that we found? And release. Everything else is quiet and on vacation. And now that we've woken up those muscles, same thing. Any movement pattern that feels good to you. So I like to start with just the side to side or up and down, you might say. Just the right amount of pushing into the cloth. I'm pushing into it and I'm also reaching through the fingers and the palm, but plugging in the arm bone into the shoulder socket. So this one gives you a really nice opportunity to explore the left side body. And one of the things I was doing earlier, I like to play and make things up as I go along, is to breathe into the left lung. So if you've done some of my other videos, you know that yes, it's possible to, to use one lung more than the other. We often do it um, <laughs> very unconsciously. But if you can feel your left lung, take a breath into your left lung. And then as you do that, slide the left hand all the way to the right. You can let your head follow. A nice little side bend, so lateral bend. And then as you breathe out, imagine squeezing the breath out of that left lung, almost like an accordion. And you can squeeze the left armpit towards the left hip. So your head's just following along. 
Inhale and reach. And exhale. Squeeze. So now it's not just the arm and that shoulder blade, but we're sensing the way that the arm and the shoulder girdle like to play with movement through the whole left side of the torso. You're sliding along. Get really long. Maybe you want to take a couple breaths when you're long. Reaching through the fingertips. Relax the armpit down. Release it. Then also exhale and squeeze for a few breaths. Shorten the left waist, the side body, and release that. And you can also on this side like we did on the other side. If you want to keep it underneath your hand, I think this feels nice as a release. Underneath your hand and make some circles. Just make some nice big circles. Like you're washing away any tension or tightness, any residual muscle engagement. Just enough. You are washing your floor. <laughs> Just wiping it away. Reaching out, pulling in, and that's it. How far can you reach out without discomfort? How far do you want to pull in? You can make circles both directions. Just the right amount of push. So we're creating that force by pushing into gravity. Hmm, getting some cracking here. Finish that round of circles. And you can also, just to see if it feels a little different, you'll feel the muscles differently. You can put the back of the hand on the cloth and do the same thing. You get a different different uh, bend to your wrist as well. So we're working with the, uh, with the wrist joint. You could also do the overhead and the slide down with the back of the hand pressing down. So it's just, it's this is all play and it's a play that we do, a play of awareness. Right? You can still picture those bony landmarks and you're reaching out from those bony landmarks. What feels good? How can you create more mobility with pleasure? Reaching out from your heart. Mm. Your head can roll side to side. I've got a mic on, so my head's a little limited with where it can go. And then we'll relax that left arm and shoulder. You can either keep your arms at your sides or come back to that, what we call the crocodile pose, opposite arm and elbow, and just take about three to five breaths resting here before we flip over. Just sensing yourself again, checking with the lower body, is it still relaxed? So we land everything into the ground that's touching the ground. And we're going to continue on with that left arm. But we're going to roll onto our back body. So you'll see I'm going to bring the cloth with me. And once again, so the only difference is you can bend your legs, you can take your legs out straight, whatever's comfortable, is that we're feeling our shoulder blades on the ground and the ground is always an opportunity for feedback. So sensing particularly the left shoulder blade, you can even touch the left collarbone now with your right hand, locate yourself in those bony landmarks. And we're gonna take the um, towel underneath the left elbow once again and just begin to push and release a few times and see if you feel some tightening and where is that around the collarbone, underneath the armpit, the back body. Can you sense how when you push your elbow down, there might be a little lift of the shoulder blade or how does your shoulder blade move? Creating that purposeful engagement, recruiting the muscles and then releasing. And your hand and wrist can be relaxed. And once you find that, make sure you're kind of to that left side of the mat so you got some room to slide and push down and create some movement. So you can see on this side, I have a lot more um, ability to move the head along with the arms. So we often work with the neck along with the shoulders. Right arm's relaxed. See, my right arm wants to do it too. I have to tell it it's not its time yet. And you're just sliding up and down. You can make some circles. So notice when you make those circles, the up and down, you're going to feel perhaps more in the arm. But if you start to make circles through the elbow, 
See if you can feel the way your shoulder blade is moving on your back body. Go really slow. Moving from the elbow will encourage that shoulder blade to go upward, inward, downward, and outward. And there's something crazy like 46 different uh, combinations of movements that our shoulders can make. Maybe you're feeling a few of those. And then we'll stop. We're gonna switch it out. Feeling a little bit of, little bit of exhaustion there in my shoulder already, but it's a good exhaustion. It's, I found my muscles exhaustion. Now take the cloth and put it underneath your left hand, spread your fingers, and begin again by just pushing into gravity with the hand. And notice how you're pushing the cloth down, like maybe you're, imagine you're trying to blot up some water on your floor and you're pushing down. And sense how that engages the muscles in the arms and that left arm and all the way through the collarbone and the shoulder blade. Any information your body's giving you, you might even hold it for a couple breaths, breathing in and out. Sense the tension and the lengthening, reach through the fingers, but plug the upper arm bone, the humerus bone into the shoulder. Take a few breaths and then release it, maybe 25% at a time. So another thing I'm noticing again, I'm pushing down into my right arm. I'm trying to tell my right arm, it's not its turn, but it's, it wants to join. So we really learn how to use one side independently, which oftentimes when we have tightness or discomfort in the neck or the shoulders, it's because even though only one side should be doing the work, the grumpy side is trying to help. So now you find that push down and make some movements. So the up and down might be there right now. My palm is on the cloth. And I can do an up and down. I can do circular motions, very limited though, although it feels kind of good on my wrist and my elbow. So the joints, any of the joints that want to play, going really slow, full awareness of the muscles. But you might also flip the hand over the other way, push the back of the hand down. You could do some movements from here just the right amount of engagement. Elbow can stay straight, you can bend it. So play with palm up, palm down. The other thing I did earlier is I put my fingertips into the cloth. So you might take the tips of your fingers and make some circles. So just different ways, different ways to rearrange what we're feeling through that left hand and arm and shoulder. Reaching, usually what we try to do is go beyond our usual range of motion, but only if it feels safe, if there's not pain. Sensation is different than pain. Sensation scale of one to 10, never a pain scale. And do a few more rolls, a few more movements, fingertips, palm, back of the hand your body to play with. You might find that side bend on this side. I'm doing that too. I can inhale into my left lung and now it might be easier to find it. Think of opening that back lung or breathing into the back lung. Feel the floor underneath you and create that side body bend. And breathe out. Squeeze the left lung so you're bringing your left shoulder towards your hip. Same movement we did on our front side. Maybe a little more play for the head, perhaps. We'll finish up with that one on our side. I can tell that my arm is getting longer because when I started, I was not hitting the wall by the door, and now I am. <laughs> Need more space. And then we'll stop. Just pause on your back for a moment. Feel yourself from the fingertips through the palms and up to the shoulders. Those three breaths in the magic moment, just sensing the sensation that's there when you're still. And we have one more for the left side. So this one, you're gonna roll onto your right side body. Feel free to use your right arm as a pillow or put something underneath your head if you'd rather. So I'm gonna kind of bend my arm in here and get to the edge of your mat 
because we're going to use the elbow again. So come all the way over. You can stack your knees and get that left elbow on the uh, on the tea towel, dishcloth tea towel. So once the elbow's on there, push again a few times and release. So just establishing that connection to the bones and the muscles, pushing, maybe holding for a few breaths and releasing. And then with the elbow on there and just the right amount of push, and you can play with, you know, push 100% versus just 75% versus 50%, and then make some circles. And as you do these, again, feel yourself from your shoulder blade, even though it's the elbow that's initiating the movement, moving that cloth, sense the way your shoulder blade is going in circles on your back. Maybe you feel a little movement in the collarbone. Keep cleaning with that elbow. Just the right amount of push. You can also go up and down. So much fun with this cloth, right? And then we'll stop. The last one we'll do on the side here. I really like this one because this takes our, so we took our, our back and, and torso into a side bend. Now we're going to take it into more of what we call a back bend. So the back bend is the arch in the spine or the extension of the spine. So we're going to take the hand onto the cloth and extend anywhere in front of you. Push a few times and release. So feeling the connection from the fingertips all the way up through the shoulder blade and the shoulder, the collarbone, so that whole shoulder girdle on the left side. You might push for a few breaths. Imagine reaching the fingertips, but plugging the arm bone into the shoulder. So if you're reaching way out, take that shoulder blade towards the back of the mat behind you just a little bit, feeling it even through the hand and release, and then just the right amount of pressure. You can start to slide up overhead as you breathe in. So as I breathe in, I'm thinking, fill my left lung again, and I might even lift my left lung a little, sliding overhead. This is where my right arm starts to get in the way a little bit. I'm gonna fold it back in, reaching, and as I breathe out, I'm taking it down. So there's almost a rounding of a spine, or what we'd say, is a, um, we're, we're creating a forward fold in yoga, but it's the extension of the spine on the inhale. And then a little bit of a rounding on the exhale. So we'd also say arching the spine on the inhale, breathe into your left lung and curling on the exhale. But see what works for you. Remember that it's your hand and arm and your torso, particularly your left side body, is just, it's responding to the movement in the arm. But you can press into that cloth and create that engagement of the muscles, but imagine moving from your shoulder blade. Does that feel different to move from your shoulder blade? My right arm's not sure where it wants to be today. And go as far as you want overhead and back down. Feel your collarbones coming forward, your rib cage as you breathe in and take the arm overhead. And sort of making that front body short as you breathe out and coming back. Take one or two more. Stop and pause here if you'd like. I like the lengthening through this left side, a little bit of arch in my left side. Creating space for us to breathe into the left lung. You might even relax the muscles in the arm and the shoulder. This is our last one for the left arm. So finding a place of spaciousness and grace. So now we're not only in the arm and the shoulder but feeling the connection of the shoulder to the torso. The lung, the waist, you might feel in your left hip. Whole left side.
And then take that down. We're gonna roll back onto our belly where we started this whole program. <laughs> and wherever your head is most comfortable, take both arms down to your sides. And we'll take that magic moment to feel ourself, ourselves uh, from the fingers to the shoulders. Can you sense any difference? If you can't feel it with your arms at your sides, you could just slightly slide your arms overhead. Even with the elbows bent, can you sense a difference? And sometimes it's not so much the muscles, it's this idea of being more connected, having more of a clearer conscious vision of where your left hand and arm are and how they attach to your shoulder girdle. So our body mapping has been updated on that left side. And saying thank you to your left hand and arm and shoulder, particularly if you're left-handed, but even if you're not, all the things we do are with our left hand and arm and shoulder. And then cross opposite hand to elbow again, just kind of signifying that we're going to be switching sides. Resting into it. Check again that the lower body is relaxed. You can shift your hips from side to side, or jelly roll the legs, or take the feet up. I'm noticing a big difference in the waist and the side body, as well as the arms, but what do you feel in your body? And that's all part of this finding ourselves as a soma, recognizing ourselves as a soma, this idea that you are the only one that can go in right now and feel what's the same, what's changed, what's different. And then we'll be doing the same movements with the right arm. But before you start, just encourage yourself to feel the right collarbone. You could even touch it with your left hand if you want, if you want to know exactly where it is. Maybe breathe again into the base of the throat, underneath the right collarbone. In the back body, sensing your right shoulder blade. Forming this idea of shoulder girdle in the mind's eye, coming down through the arm and all the way to the fingers. And we'll start by sliding ourselves over to the right side of the mat just a little bit so you have plenty of space to move. And we will put the right elbow on the tea towel, wherever your head is most comfortable. And begin to press the elbow into the tea towel. So I'm on my inner elbow. You could also go lift your hand if you want, but push down and release. And notice as you do that, does anything happen below the waist? So I'm noticing when I push into my right elbow, my left buttocks cheek wants to engage, which that is that crossover pattern. You'll see I have a back bend that we teach that. But right now, this is my hyper side that likes to work too much. So I'm saying it's okay to be quiet. Just let the shoulder do its thing. And left arm can be down at your side. Encourage it to relax. You might push into the right elbow long enough to feel that connection the upper arm bone into your shoulder blade and all the way through your upper right back. And then once you found that, just the right amount of pressure and start to draw. <laughs> draw with your elbow. The up and down might be an easy movement first or think of a half circle. My fingers, wrists are staying relaxed. And you might be pushing down with the elbow, but think of moving from your shoulder blade and your collarbone. In addition to that half circle, you can make some full circles. Start to circle around with your elbow really slow. Like you have to drag that cloth a little bit. Maybe you do, depending on your floor. Really getting it clean. And sense the shape of the shoulder blade moving 
in circles, just like the elbow is. You can switch the direction of the circles. Hmm. Checking with the rest of the body that it's not trying to get involved, but staying relaxed. <laughs> Quiet. My, I'm quieting my left butt cheek there. And then we'll be pausing for a moment. Switching the cloth to the right hand. So you can put it right underneath that right hand. And first, I like to reach out a little bit. So reach out either to your side overhead. It's really wherever your shoulder, think of wherever your arm comes into the shoulder joint most comfortably. And then keeping your elbow straight more or less, push the hand into the ground and release. And I've got my palm down first, so you may want to try that. Push the palm into the ground, the fingers even, like you're clawing at the ground and release. And feel that sensation. It's like this, this full energetic connection of muscular engagement, muscles wrapping around the bones from fingers all the way through that upper right back, but also energetically opening up that space. And then once you're ready, you can start to move. I like to reach up overhead as I breathe in and down as I breathe out. And if you have the, the awareness to breathe into one lung, feel your right lung. Send the breath into the right lung, slide up and over. So create space with the lung and then reach from that space with the hand. Breathe out, squeeze the ribs, squeeze the right lung, take the hand down to your side. So creating this little side bend, this lateral bend. Just recognizing the way that movement of the shoulders and arms are not removed or independent of the torso, right? It's this finding the parts to feel the whole, engaging one area and then letting the rest respond. Let your waist and your side body, your ribs respond as you reach. Letting my cheek slide. Keeping the left arm relaxed. But you can even squeeze on the end of the exhale, draw your right armpit towards your right hip. Squeeze it out, that last little bit of breath. Inhale, reach. And it might feel good to stop there in that little side bend for a moment. Just enough engagement from the fingertips all the way through the hip, perhaps. Continue to breathe into your right side. The muscles are squeezing the bones, they're hugging in, they're engaged, but they're also long. And then slowly release it a little at a time. And then the hand on the towel, there were also the options of doing more circles. I think that feels really nice after keeping it long. And the palms down. But if you want to get a little more mobility for your uh, wrist, you could also take the back of the hand to the cloth. Notice the way you're bending your wrist, making those circles. Your elbow. So if you're going really fast, it's because you're not probably not pushing enough. So make sure you're pushing just enough that the muscles are working for you. It's the Goldie, Goldilocks theory, not too much, not too little. Palm down, palm up, just playing. Thank you to your right hand and arm. Hmm. And then we'll pause for a second with both arms at our sides. A lot of times we do have one shoulder that's tighter, maybe one arm that we use more, so that's understanding. Understandable. Just feeling what you've created so far in your body. And then we'll be rolling on to our backside. It's a slow roll. <sighs> 
And the towel is going to go to the right side of your body. You can slide your right side of the body over a little bit to the right side of your mat if you want. And we'll start again from the elbow. So placing the right elbow on your towel, just begin to, and hand can be down or it can be up, but I like to think wrist, right now my wrist is floppy, my fingers are relaxed. I'm really pushing with my elbow. So it's more, the engagement is more upper arm and shoulder and releasing. And feel yourself from the collarbone. You might even touch your right collarbone. Notice how your collarbone will lift up into your left hand as you push down into your elbow. And on the back side, you can feel how your shoulder blade is lifting and then releasing. And unfortunately, this is a position many of us have this rounded shoulder position. So we're coming into it. We're tightening it beyond what we normally would. So feel those pectoral muscles around the collarbones, the front there, tighten, and then completely release just by pushing into your elbow and releasing. So that's that like recreating that hunched feeling in the right shoulder and releasing. And then after doing that hunching, tightening, tightening, take a few breaths, slowly release it. We'll do just enough pushing into the cloth with the elbow so we can feel it and begin to slide. And sliding can be this half circle first, this nice up and down movement. Opportunity to air out your armpit here in addition to cleaning your floors, all these benefits that we don't even think about, right? I want one of those audience things where they tell everybody to laugh at certain times. I hold up the sign, everybody laugh, everybody smile. And then you might do more of a circular motion from the elbow. So you'll see, I know for me, I have to push down a little bit more. And this is really going to recruit those muscles around the shoulder itself, not just the arm, but I can really feel those shoulder muscles working. Everything else is relaxed that right shoulder. This is a nice one. If you have frozen shoulder, start to get it to move a little bit. Hand is relaxed. And I'm feeling myself in the upper arm bone, the humerus, feel it where it comes into the shoulder girdle. And just this nice interplay between the shoulder girdle and the arm. Sense of mobility. And how that mobility happens. What muscles are engaging and when do they release? You can pull both, go both directions. And then relax your t towel elbow for a moment. And we'll be switching. <laughs> so you're gonna put the towel underneath your right hand, anywhere you wanna be. It could be at the height of the shoulder. Usually there's more sensation there or down by your hip, but push in with the palm of the hand and release. And you're just feeling. Can you sense all the muscles now? I even like to imagine clawing a little bit. So I'm lifting the palm up and clawing my fingers and releasing. As I push down, I simultaneously reach out through the fingers, but plug the upper arm bone in. Full engagement, breathing for a few breaths and a slow release of all of those muscles where we just let the ground hold the weight of the arm and shoulder. And once we've found that, you can keep the palm there, just the right amount of recruiting those muscles and start to slide up and down. If you want to do it to your breath, I like to think as I breathe in, I reach up, breathing into the right lung, creating space through my breath, and then my arm will create more space. And breathing out, squeezing the breath out, bringing the right armpit towards the waist, towards the hip. Let the rest of your body respond. So if your head wants to move. I know we said arms and shoulders, but notice your neck. Notice your torso. It's a lovely marriage 
within our body, all of the connective tissue, fascial tissue, and you're working really the whole right side right now. Left side is quiet on vacation. Whole right side of your body. You might continue with this movement, but you could take the back of the hand, just a little bit of a difference. Sliding overhead. You know, I find I have a lot more range of motion with the back of the hand down. You'll feel that little side bend again, perhaps, but I also need to push more. And you might find as you go up more, that hand's going to need to lift up. So stop before the hand lifts. You want to keep pushing. It's the pushing into the towel that's engaging the muscles and then remembering to come down and you can even release them in between. We also, from this position, did circles. And the circles could be done with the back of the hand on there, the palm of the hand on there. Not so much going on there for me, unless I go really slow and push. The other one we did, and it's just a different sensation for the hands and the wrists, right? These little guys do so much for us. So coming out of fingertips, imagine like a, a spider crawling and push the fingertips down. Like you're holding a ball underneath the palm of your hand and making those same circles. Once again, I'm checking in because now my left arm is trying to tighten in the left side of my neck. So it's that reminder to my nervous system, it's not your turn, just the right side. And even when we don't move to our breath, we just have awareness of breath, that we are breathing, breathing in a healthy way, or breathing fully in and complete out. Take one more round of motion. And we'll pause. Pause on your backside. Feel the two sides of your body, particularly your hands, arms, and shoulders, right and left. Just sensing being in your body. The floor is there to support you. The floor is there to give you feedback on your right shoulder blade. Can you really feel your right shoulder blade on the ground? You may have felt it moving in that last, uh, last little cycle. And then the last one we do is our side lying posture. I'm going to switch just so I'm facing you, but you can just turn on to your left side. <laughs> Milo's turning on to his right side for us. Thank you, Milo. And snoring. So finding, you can put a pillow underneath your left, underneath your left uh, ear if you want, or, shoulder, or underneath your neck. Come to the edge of your mat so that you can put your right elbow on the tea towel. And we start by just pushing and releasing. And push it and release it. Again, you'll feel, I can sense the way that my upper back is stretching a little bit, but engaging. I can feel the muscles engage around the right shoulder blade, but there's also a tightening around the collarbone. So do that a few times and check to see it's releasing. And then just the right amount of pressure to recruit the muscles as much as you want. So there's sensation without strain and then begin to go up and down. So the first movement I like to do is just that little half circle, trying to keep my lower arm and hand relaxed. And even though, so there's really no good way to put the cloth underneath your shoulder blade, unfortunately you can, but it's a little tricky. So think of moving the elbow from the shoulder blade and you can do circles or from the collarbone. So you're pushing the elbow into the cloth to recruit the muscles and then circling that shoulder blade on your back. It goes up towards your ear, out towards your outer arm, down towards your waist, and inward towards 
your spine. You can switch the direction of the circles. Hmm. Let your shoulder roll and move it too. And then we'll pause for a moment. So the last one we do is with the hand. And take your arm into some form of extension. It can be right in front of your face or down towards your knees. It doesn't really matter. You can play with different positions. But elbow is long. And begin to push the palm into the cloth and release. And one thing I check for myself is that I'm not completely dropping the right shoulder down. So for me, I like to stack the right shoulder a little more. I noticed I'm too far forward and I wasn't feeling as, as much engagement. So stacking the right shoulder on top of the left and think of drawing your right shoulder blade towards the back of the mat behind you a little bit. So that connectedness of hand all the way to shoulder blade. And you can push down and breathe for a couple of breaths, holding that and releasing. And then start to find the movement, maybe that arch first. And so the arch will include your back as you re as you breathe in, create a little back bend, arch your back, feel the front body stretch all the way from the navel center through your chest. As you breathe out, slide it down towards your knees and feel the front body shorten or compress and the back body stretch. You can breathe into your right lung or course both lungs. Breathe and reach. And something I'm being cautious of in addition to running into Milo's foot is that what I tend to do, this is my grumpy tight side that I've had a number of issues with, is I tend to bend my elbow. And as soon as I bend my elbow trying to come up, it's it's not a true engagement. You're, we're losing that connectedness, what I say, the energy of the all the muscles being engaged. So even if I don't go as high, I'm going to push and reach without straining it. But this side takes a little more focus to do that for me. It's like you have one long arm that actually starts at the fingers and comes all the way through the shoulder blade and the collarbone. What is your movement potential from there, from fingers to shoulder blade and collarbone? Go further overhead if you want. And letting your back and spine respond. Notice the way your pelvis might even tilt forward as you breathe in. Your pelvis might tilt back as you breathe out. So we're creating that arch and curl movement that we do so often in somatic yoga. But also here you can keep the hand there. You can do some circles, polish it up. Last opportunity to polish your floor. Maybe we do that. Did you put something underneath your cloth? Are you polishing your floor? And the idea that you can do it from the palm, but you can also take the back of the hand to the ground. Ooh, very interesting for my wrist. Spreading the fingers. As silly as these tea towel practices may sound, it's really a wonderful way to get ourselves to feel the, what I say is the individuation, each little part from the, from the micro to the macro of the body. Feel your little finger, your, your, your thumb, but then feel the whole of fingers all the way through that right shoulder girdle and even through your whole right side, through your spine, right? From the micro to the macro, from little to big, or the parts to the whole. You are a whole. You can pause if you want. The last one on the other side we did. Maybe just rest. Let the arm muscles relax. And feel yourself fully from the Right fingertips 
through the hand, the wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, through your shoulder, and even into the right side body. Hmm. When you're ready, you can slide that down. Roll onto your back side, where we'll finish. First, when you get to your back side, take the position that's comfortable for your legs. You can jelly roll your legs. Let them take a space where they're relaxed and, and they can go backstage for a little while longer as we tend to our needs in our upper body. So give yourself another hug. Notice which arm is on top. Reach your fingers all the way around to your shoulder blades and just gently rock your shoulder blades. So you're locating yourself from your shoulder blades. When we do this crossing, they'll kind of wing off your back a little bit, those inner edges. And you can feel them. Massage them into the ground a little bit. And then do the same thing, just cross your arms the other way, wrap your fingers around towards the outer edges of the shoulder blades. Feel that compression in the front around your collarbones. Let your head go side to side like you're massaging the back of the head. And we'll release that and see if there's a position with your arms at your sides and long, but where you feel completely relaxed. So you might want them right at your hips. It may be that you want them out at the height of the shoulders, or if it's there for you, even overhead for a little more stretch. Take a moment again to breathe in through your nose. Think of your favorite scent, maybe your favorite scented flower or food that you enjoy. Breathe that scent right into the base of your throat, like you could taste it. And from there, with each breath in, let the lovelihood of that scent spread into your upper chest, underneath the collarbones, to your upper left and right lung. Take some nice, full, deep breaths into the upper lungs. They often get a bad rap. This idea of chest breathing that, you know, we're using accessory muscles in the neck and the upper chest. Right now, let yourself breathe into those upper lobes of the lungs so they can move the collarbones, move the shoulder blades on the backside. And then breathe into the shoulder blades. Feel your rib cage resting on tops of the shoulder blades in the back. As you breathe into the backs of the lungs, you'll feel the ribs spread, creating a little bit of force in the shoulder blades. And you might feel your shoulder blades moving on the ground. And just like we can imagine the smell of something sweet or delicious through our nose. See if you can image or experience the vision of something sweet and joyful in your heart. You can see it in your mind's eye, breathe it into your heart center as you're breathing in, just like you can carry it. You can carry a scent through your nose. You can carry, carry that image into your heart on your breath in. As you breathe out, send it from the heart through the collarbones, the shoulder blades, through the upper arm bones, the elbows, the lower arms, the wrists, holding it in the palm of your hands. Letting it relax your fingers. Continue to breathe in, create that image in your mind's eye or in your heart. Image of sweetness and joy and filling this whole area, shoulders and the arms. And 
We found a physical position where the arms and the shoulders are completely relaxed. Knowing you have the ability to let the ground support them. Muscles softening onto the bones. And clearing the way for that image to enter your heart space and flow all the way through the shoulders, the arms, and into the palms of the hands. Taking three more rounds of breath. Sense yourself from your fingertips. Just begin to wiggle the fingertips wherever they may be. And open and close the hands. Feel the backs of the hands and the palms of the hands as they stretch and compress. Sense yourself from your wrists. Make some easy circles with your wrists. You can make a fist or keep your fingers relaxed. Move your wrists, left and right. And then let's find some floppy elbows. You can keep your hands down, or I like to bend my elbows and let the wrists and wrists and fingers be relaxed and just move from the elbows, little circles. Beautiful joints. And then wherever your arms need to be on your body or at your sides, I like on my body and roll your shoulders a little bit. You can push them into the ground behind you, pull them down towards your hips, lift them away from the ground, feel shoulder blades lift and reach up towards your ears. Make some super sweet circles with your shoulders. We can move together separately, a little dance. Ah, take a big breath in your nose, out your mouth. Thank you to your sensational, sensuous shoulders, your awesome arms. I hope that today and every day, is a day that you use them to bring blessings to yourself and to share those blessings to all of those around you, whether it be preparing food or helping someone in any way you might with your hands, arms, and shoulders, driving your kids to school. So many ways that we use our hands, arms, and shoulders to, to help others in this lifetime. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Patreons, for all of your support keeping this channel going. And to all of you who comment, really appreciate it. Peace, joy, love, and light.